Hello and welcome to Ask the Experts where we consolidate all the questions. We take up questions from our clients, from our webinars and from our online media, from people who write into us and people who ask us in our seminars and stuff. And if you have not been attending our webinars, you are missing out on something. Head out to our website vistainfusic.com as you can see and uh, you can see the webinars that's been hosted and the upcoming ones too. Well, the first question, the question for the day today is something that, um, you know, is asked by all our clients. Uh, we have been in PCI DSS since uh, 2008 when there was version 1.2, 1.1, 1.2 in progress and it's been a uh, fantastic 12 years now in PCI DSS. And so that is what is the annual audit requirements? Is it, see first of all everyone knows that PCI DSS is not just a one shot thing. You have to, once you get certified that's just the beginning. That is you have to do many things to remain compliant. So what are the major compliance requirements? Uh, for PCI DSS which might result in a non-conformity so as we as I whatever I'm going to tell you is not something that is cooked up in my head but I'm just be summarizing what is already covered in the in the beautiful written standard of PCI DSS 3.2.1 I'm referring 3.2.1 because that's the latest standard as on the date of making this video now one more thing I would like to say is that as I give you the frequencies uh, yeah, it can be like X test to be done quarterly, yearly, half yearly, monthly, whatever. So this is only a recommended uh, a mandatory frequency plus if there is any change to your setup you need to do those tests again. So it is uh, for example the first test that we see is ASV that is approved scanning vendor test of your external IP addresses that is under section 11.2 of PCI DSS. Now that is quarterly to be done. and after any sort of significant change. So if you've done six, seven major changes during this year, you better have shown six, seven ASV reports also. Or you've exposed new IPs, or if you've taken applications on, off from the externally exposed IP addresses, you better be doing an additional cycle of approved scanning vendor test. Now, one thing, just I th think I should mention this, is that ASV is only to be done of your external IP addresses. There are people, um, very wrong to do this and um, unethical if I can say this is that uh, you know they even say that ASV is for the internal IP addresses but that is wrong ASV is only for your externally exposed IP addresses that's the first one the second one is your internal VA of all the IPs in scope of your card data environment that is under again 11.2 of PCI DSS uh, standard and that this is again has to be done quarterly and or after significant changes so that is an internal vulnerability assessment this can be done by anybody many companies call us to do it and if you're interested in that drop us a line and we'll definitely look at look it up you don't need an ASV to do that you can even do it yourself though it is not recommended because uh, you know you need an unbiased approach to doing an internal VA this is again quarterly to be done the next is wireless scanning of your premises. This is again 11.1 of PCI DSS 3.2.1 and this is again quarterly and or after significant changes. Now let me tell you a word of caution over here. Now wireless scanning you might say like you have seen this happen or right? it is pretty serious so stay with me. You might say that we don't have any um, you know uh, wireless in our card data environment so I can take a exception to that. No you can't this requirement is meant to confirm that your status quo remains status quo so if you don't have a wireless in your enterprise these reports will prove that you don't have wireless in your card data environment so uh, you have to do this and again this is quarterly and or after significant changes the next is internal pen testing uh, 11.3 this is again annually and or after uh, significant changes and if you look at if you're a service provider then under requirement 11.3.4.1 it's again half yearly if you are a service provider that is an internal pen test of the IP addresses the next is an external pen test of your externally exposed IP addresses so one is an ASV scan to be done the next is an external pen test now this external pen test again can be done by anybody like a company like ours or even you not necessarily by an ASV you know, again, this is required to be done annually and or after significant changes. In uh, But for a service provider, it has to be done twice a year. Every six months, you have to do it under section 11.3.4.1. Next is a segmentation penetration testing, which comes under 11.3.4 of PCI DSS. 
you need to do this half yearly and or after significant changes now for a penetration for a segmentation test now many people ask what do you mean by a segmentation pen testing well you would be having a segmented network between your card and your non-card environments even within your card data environments like within your dmz your application uh, network um, your uh, database network your web networks and those things like your internal user networks uh, you'd be having different networks even within your card data environments and you would have identified as per the requirements of pci dss to have identified what traffic can flow between x to y network within the between the non card and card and even within the card data networks so this pen testing that is segmentation uh, pen testing is required to check whether only the allowed traffic is passing between these networks again extremely important cannot be skipped next is the firewall and router rule review 1.1.7 of pci dss this is again half yearly to be done as you can see the chart on your screen this is again half yearly to be done so what i mean by that the rule set in your firewall routers and switches needs to be validated for adequacy uh, twice a year minimum if you're making some massive changes to your rule set moving applications up and down maybe changing the segregation of your networks you better be doing it again next is the card holder data scan uh, under requirement 3.1 of PCI DSS, this is again required to be done quarterly and or after significant changes. What do I mean by cardholder data scan? That is, you need to confirm uh, that the card data is existing only where you have identified it to be and not leaking outside. This is basically to uh, check for data leakages even within your card data environment. And as a matter of caution, a caution to my viewers is that cardholder data scan you are supposed to be doing it ev even for your non-card data environment so if you've got your organization and you've got two networks in that that is your card data and your non-card data your CHD scan should be covering both of them the reason being your what is to confirm that your card data has not leaked from your card environment to your non-card environment so this is supposed to be covering that and this is supposed to be covering not just your servers and databases but even your endpoints your endpoints are the major thing basically to confirm one more thing is that there is no absolutely no unencrypted card data within the enterprise a few more points would be this also helps as a qsa we have done this for hundreds of companies that is um, when you're writing your roc you're supposed to be identifying what sort of columns or rows within your databases contain card card holder data this is also the chd scan is also supposed to be checking for non encrypted or encrypted card holder data within your database so when you're writing in the roc you should be very clear how do you know for sure that is only those columns contain card holder data the next is an fim file scan the, to confirm the adequacy of your FIM. This has to be done weekly 11.5B of the PCI DSS standard. So the FIM uh, checks have to be done on a weekly basis to confirm that your FIM is uh, monitoring what it's supposed to be monitoring and not otherwise. And for an FIM again, but not the alerts, all right? For the alerts that has to be in real time or it has to be checked a minimum daily. The next is an ISMS internal audit to be done that is annually minimum and that is required as per section 12.1.1 now these are the minimum requirements now it doesn't mean that if we do this and you don't do the rest it's fine but these are the minimum compliance requirements from pci dss if you are already got certified now what if you are doing this for the first time if you are doing pci dss for the first time now instead of asking for quarterly reports for the full year i just need to check the last one cycle of reporting so but the next year when you come to us for audits again i'm supposed to be checking if it is quarterly you need to show me four uh, you know four reports two reports one report whatever be the case but if it's the first time that you're doing it quarterly you need not need to show me for the full year but just for the last one cycle so that brings me to my end to the end of this uh, q a and I really hope it's been helpful and do write us your feedback, comments, it's the most important thing for us. You can see the email address on your screen, ask us at vistainfosec.com and we will get back to you. Do write to us with more queries that you might have that you want us to take up in the future. Uh, 
episodes of Ask the Experts. Do not forget as we close to subscribe to our channel. Click on the bell icon so that whenever you, we are, upload new videos, that is very frequently, you will get a notification. Take care. Bye-bye.